And it's given away. Bellingham, 25 yards, lines it up! At the heart of the Derby defence, it's Mundell, and it's tapped in for two. Is it all? All right, everybody, welcome back to another match preview on the channel. This one is for Friday night's game at the Stadium of Life. It's Sunderland versus Leeds. Dirty Leeds! <coughs> right then, before we get on with the rest of the video, I think it's a massive favour. Hit the thumbs up on this video and subscribe if you're brand new. It's down there, so we're going to cost Jack Shite. And why not follow us on Facebook? Get on. Oh, I forgot about that one. Right. We didn't no. mention it, do we? No. Right then. <laughs> right then, we're going to be talking about the Derby game. Did you manage to catch any highlights, Stephen? I've seen the goals. And, uh, and I've seen a few of their goal mouth scrambles and Patterson saves, but other than that, I haven't seen. You haven't seen much. I haven't seen much. I've read a lot about. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, man. There's some whoppers on 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 the Sunderland pages, like in there. Why? What's crap? Oh, just the the abuse and the the threatening people because they've got a difference of opinion. It, it just boils oh, my piss. Just ignore it, man. I do. Ignore it. Well, they weren't arguing with me. It's just arguing oh, with each other. Arguing with each other. I'll be like that with me popcorn. <laughs> what do you mean? You've got your own opinion. You fucking yeah. dickhead. <laughs> Don't know. What the fuck? Just let them have an opinion. <laughs> God. Sorry. Go on. Right in the derby game, man. Um, it was one to forget, really, Stephen. It wasn't like the best of games. We controlled the ball. Uh, sorry, we controlled the game without the ball. We scored when we had that little bit of momentum. But like I said, it was... We want to forget, really. Wait, I was listening to another radio. I had surround sound. I had three radios around. <laughs> I um, so I can hear it. I and uh, listening to Barnsley and Bennett. And it, it, for the first 20, 25 minutes, it sounded as though it was all Derby. I think they had something like five corners in the first uh, in the first fifteen minutes. Well, they did have plenty of the ball, but wait, no, but that's what it was. They, they, were, they, they, they were pushing for it more. Ah, they were pushing. Uh, they, they had plenty of corners, but they were like. Mm. No real great chances, but Joe should have done better with a header. He did. I um, should have. I I've seen that highlight now. Obviously, Bennett was banging on about it loads. Uh, he, um, he should have done better. What, the from, what, what it sounded to me was like that. Derby started off the more um, active team, if you will, uh, and then suddenly they just as the game got on, they settled into it, controlled it, um, and never looked really. Although Patterson had to make a few good saves. Mm -hmm. um, some of them were fairly comfortable well, in the end. Well, hey, their manager, which I do like his manager, he spoke really well about us. He was saying he, he felt aggrieved he should have got more out of the game. Like, well, they did have quite a few chances at goal, but they were pr pretty easy saves for Patterson to be made. Well, they were straight at him. Yeah, but were, but still, you've got to be in their position. Oh, of course, of course. So you've just said there, you put, the, the Derby manager said they should have got more out of the game, but the, the interview I seen, he said that the best team won. Right, I seen it on. Um, was it uh, disappointingly because we didn't come away with anything? I thought we started the game really well. Their website, their page. Oh, I, don't know. I don't know. I just oh. came. I, I seen it. I think. Yeah, he did. He said. I'll put the clip there. He said the best team won, but I don't know. Oh, it will probably deserve to do with the ninety minutes. Really, yeah. to be honest. The second half, they changed their game. Where I thought they were more, they were getting more out of the game in the first half. The way they were coming at us. The second half, they just turned dirty and. Like they were just making but, silly but fouls is, is that not just a case of putting us down and stuff like that because we started it. it was started we scored early in the second half I, I think so, we scored so the right time so, they, that, that, so that, that kind of put them under added pressure yeah. so that it would be like frustration and oh. stress by the way lashing out I mean they made all five of their substitutions oh, they did I? fairly early on in the second half well I, I thought that harness was a threat I didn't I didn't say why they, they should have took him off I thought if, they, if anything was going up and it was him he was winding Job up as well mm. constantly winding Job up and then they brought on Nathaniel Mendes Lang mate he, was, he looked like he had I've heard an NFL jacket on underneath his top <laughs> I've heard he had knee neck he was huge but he, he was a threat as well maybe he should have started him but they kept on, got the, out the game with him. they kept on banging on about that Nat Phillips they've got a love for Luke apparently he's, a, he's massive like tall aye, aye. and they were saying that he was causing pro he was causing uh, problems with, with the set pieces and the crosses mm. and things like that but aye. we managed to we managed to control them down and like like we said it well we haven't said it yet like but four, four wins unbeaten at home this season and haven't conceded a goal yet so that, that's a uh, first time in our history isn't it? it is indeed <laughs> first time in our history and it's, it, I mean you've got to give credit to the gaffer of course you have listen Reggie's not daft he's coming out saying there's a lot of things we need to improve on, mm -hmm. and these lads were being young, they're willing to learn, which is mint to hear because mm. we're top of the league, and these lads are still not, it's not a finished article, so they're going to improve as the season goes on. Hopefully, we can just put a bit of a gap between us and the next uh, second place, really. Wait, I mean, it's, it's very, very tight. Oh, definitely <laughs> but of course, it is, it's early in the season. Yeah, we're only seven, in we're, down, you know, we're only seven, eight games in, eight. eight games in this season, so obviously, you know, there's still 38 games left, for God's sake. All oh. right. Say that, that was quick math. <laughs> um, but, well, I mean, we can't really... I mean, not that I was there, you were, but we can't really mention Derby's game without mentioning Job's goal. Oh, mate, what a beauty. What a rocket. Did uh, you see 
Did you see who um, Roberto Carlos? Roberto Carlos. <laughs> yeah, you did. You know. Roberto Carlos. Co- was it retweeted or something or commented on it? He uh, said, just on a round of applause and all that. He loves the lads. Oh, <laughs> class, unreal. <laughs> but that goal, right? I, I didn't expect him to shoot from where he did. I thought oh, I was so just why? going to recycle it. Right. Go back and watch the print. Go and watch the vlog. Aye. And before Joe hits it, you hear him on camera shouting, "Shoot!" Did I? Yes. I oh. swear to God. Shoot! Shoot! Go on! Go! Aye, well, that's just excitement, isn't it? No, but you shouted, "Shoot!" Aye. And then he shot. <laughs> and then you see, he didn't expect him to shoot. No, but I didn't because they're normally recycling. Or we're going off to the left, off to the right, and then across comes in, or we're going back. But you told him to shoot. But and he listened, and he done right. it. And I was the move. The whole rotor end shouted, "Shoot!" Aye, aye, aye. Um, uh, also, Isidore's goal, his movement, we keep mentioning it, Stephen, what I've done for the past, was it the last game and this game? Yeah. He just looks like a proper striker. He's knee winger. <laughs> he is an out and out striker for us. And his physicality, his pace. Oh, well, just big, big Red said that in his post match interview. He says, uh, when they mentioned Isidore, obviously getting two and two. Right. Um, and he said, oh, but we, we classed him more as a left winger, but uh, maybe not. No. Maybe he's a striker. <laughs> Def- definitely. A striker. striker. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was, like, like I said, the game wasn't like, you know, it wasn't getting amazing to watch, but we'd just done what needed to be done to get the three points. Would you, you, take, would you take another 30 out of them? 100 million. Well, there you go. All day long. Right, and today that taps us on to Leeds. Now, Leeds are currently fifth at the minute. The, 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 listen, they sell a shit ton of good players at the start of the season. Well, they had no choice. They had no choice. No, we'll go through a list of them and I've got them down here. I've had to write it because it's that long. They've got Rutter, 46 million to Brighton. Archie Gray, yeah, one of their boyhood club people. 41 million to Spurs. Then you've got Somerville, 29 to West Ham. Do you want to see that one, mate? Sinistella. 23 million to Bournemouth. Kamara, 10 million, and Creswell, 5 million. There was a few of the ones what I didn't write down as well, but they had to get rid of a lot of players. And some they had, that's, I heard they had to make something like 100, 100, that, they had something, to make 100 something million. I, but they've, like they've done it. A lot of fans will say, like, are they going to be able to cope with getting rid of all that talent and try and reinvest some of it and bring in talent to keep them there and there about in the top six? And they're managing to do that at the minute. Uh, but I, I know it's old news, and I'm, I'm getting sidetracked there, right? It's old news, and I'm not going to dwell on it. But Rudder 46 million, Archie Gray 41 million, Somerville 29 million, Sinistera 23 million. We sold Jack Clark for 15 plus 5 million add-ons. Uh, it's absolutely stupid. We've got, anyway, we've got Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> so Leeds, as always, I've always got the stats. Uh, they've won four, drew three and lost one so far this season, scoring 13 and conceding five in the process. However, only one of them goals have conceded has been away from home. <laughs> so... It, but really, it's got nil-nil written all over this game because they, they don't concede away from home or they've conceded one and we don't concede at home. Aye, um, so, <laughs> listen, they're a good, strong team and we, we're under no losing. It's going to be a very, very tough game. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I expected. I, I, I was wondering, and ahhing, is this going to be our toughest challenge yet this season? Um, no, I think Burnley was probably the toughest, but with the amount of injuries Burnley had, uh, Leeds think, could be. So I'm, expect, it's going to be Leeds, I'm yeah. expecting a fiery affair tomorrow night. I really am. The reason I think it's going to be late, Stephen, is because you know Burnley had a new manager, managerial change with company yeah. leaving, and players left, players came in. I know they did shift a lot of players out and brought a lot of players in, but they're feeling the, uh, the championship for a bit now. So yeah. they're coming down from the Premier League, try to adapt quickly to the prep to yeah. the championship again. I think Leeds is going to be harder, harder opponents. <laughs> me. But you've also got to bear in mind as well, yes, they've lost points this season. They've drew three and they've lost one. The three they've drew, they drew first game of the season against Pompey, but Pompey will have been all good uh, going for it because it was the first game back in the Championship for a while. Yeah. West Brom and Norwich were the other two games they drew and the only team they've been beaten off this season was Burnley. So where the hard draft points have been against good opposition, mm. apart from the Pompey game, but that was the same, first game of the season. Um, listen, They've got a decent record. We've got a decent record. It's going to be a tough challenge. There's need. There's need to have a, oh, D- Daniel okay. Fark. Daniel Fark, who uh, yeah, he does look like a die-hard villain. <laughs> um, but he's got the playing good football, and he knows what he's doing. And uh, if, if, like I say, it's going to be it's it's going to be an interesting game. Well, we'll move on to the key players who, who they've got at the club. Um, Pyro being one of them, Stephen. He's got. Yeah. He's got two goals. Up and no, he's got three goals three and one. Goals he's got three goals and one assist. But last season he got fourteen. In fourteen three. goals. He's a good player. He's a good striker. Now as well, back in that is we. I remember him from his Swansea time when he yeah. was there, and I thought he's a good player. Him and then Leeds snapped him up yeah. shortly after. That's we got Nonto, and now, Fort was managing these minutes. Yeah. Because 
the, the score depth's not really up to stand. Like they've got quite a few injuries in anyway. So there's, the managing his minutes the same with uh, Ramazani. Is that him? Ramazani. Ramazani. They're the managing his minutes as well. So that's probably why you've seen him probably not getting as much game time as what Leeds fans will have expected. Well, them two players you just mentioned there, Nando's got two goals and two assists, and Ramazani's got two goals and one assist. Mm. Um, Nando, if you remember last season. At the start of the season, he was refusing to play. Yeah, he wanted to leave. He, he was lying, saying he was injured so he could, because he was trying to force a move. Was I? He never got one the last summer. He didn't get one in January. He hasn't got one this summer. So I, I don't know if he's maybe just accepted that he's staying there, or maybe he's happy being there now. We don't know. He's uh, a good player, isn't it, it is. It, oh, he's a good player. He's little. Physical, he's little physical stocky. and stocky. Yeah, he's like he's like a smaller version of Tony Yaboa. Ah, yeah, uh, for, for, for the for you old boys who remember him, <laughs> he, he had a rifle of a shot on him. Um, another couple of players, um, just to mention, they've got Daniel James. Uh, Daniel James is well known. He's rapid as hell. Oh, um, very good. This season, he's only got one goal and zero assists so far. However, last season, he got 13 goals and seven assists. Yeah, he's so more of him. He's a Welsh international. He's, he's, he's highly rated across everywhere. Um, he's going to be one to keep an eye on. I believe he played, does he play on the right? So he'll be coming I up against Sergan. Best left back in the league. Yeah, oh, definitely. I. Probably a good competition like that. So that. That's if James will start. Yeah. Yeah, and another player they've got to keep an eye on is Brendan A. Aronson. Now, I know it's pronounced Aronson, but it's two A's in front of it. It's A. Aronson. Um, <laughs> he's got two goals and he's got one assist. Uh, um, so, there's two players to keep an eye on. There's also another... There's another. There's, there's a Japanese kid, but I can't remember what his name oh, is. Um, that's on there. Oh, look. Oh, Natakarai. He's one, he's, he hasn't got any goals and any assists, but he's a workhorse. He doesn't he's stop. He's mint. He's, he's mint classic. Mint. He just, he just, he's, he, he doesn't run around the pitch. He teleports. He does. He graphs all over. He just appears all over the pitch. We're going to have to keep an eye on him. They've got a few players who they brought in this season as well. Bogle being one of them. I think mm. they got him from uh, Sheffield United, was it? I don't know. I don't I'm don't sure know. it was Sheffield United. They've got Rowan from Spurs for 11 million. I'll probably pronounce that wrong. <laughs> Sent off. Good player. So I, it's, it's, they've got the brought the recruited Kenny well. Yeah, they have. I mean, they had to sell. Well. They had to sell, and they've so they've, they've brought in a lot of money, but they couldn't spend it all because they needed it. Uh, but they have brought in some good players, and let's say they've only lost once this season. They've drew three. Right. Um, they're only three points behind us at this early stage in the season. We've got the home advantage because we do seem to have turned the stadium in a bit of a fortress so far this season. Yes, um, we have. So yeah. we just need to keep that. We just need to keep that momentum going. Well, I, listen, I said um, quite a few. Days ago, I put on Twitter like we've been coming a bit of a fortress at this team. Like obviously we're not conceding at all. We're winning every game, so obviously there's going to be like known as a bit of a hard place to come. Uh, Leeds last season they lost out to Southampton. Southampton yeah. went up. They didn't. Now they're obviously going to be a team that's going to be there and thereabouts come the end of the season. And Sunderland, have, you know, we've got to treat this game as probably one of the hardest games. Even Reggie said in his press it's conference today. It definitely is going to be. Yeah, you know, Reggie said that in his press conference today. He said Leeds are going to be there now, about so. I'm just thinking more about this here. They've conceded five goals this season. Three mm. of them were on the first year. Oof. So they've only conceded two goals in the From last seven men. matches. Jesus, that's mint. I like really, isn't it? It is, I. I, I, I overlooked that fact. And what, what's ours, by the way? We've conceded four this season. Um, two penalties. No, five, sorry. We've conceded five. One All against right. Portsmouth, three against Plymouth. And but what was on two own goals and one penalty, two penalties, two penalties, two own goals, and two from open play. So we must have conceded six. Uh, but two, we've only conceded two from open play. So you, oh, can, yeah. you can look at it like that. Yeah, man, like swings and roundabouts, really. But mate, it's like you said, it's gonna be a tough game under the new lights. At the I know, but I missed the show yesterday, obviously because yes. I was at work. Not yesterday, the day before. I was at work. Um, I've, I've got a half shift in tomorrow, so I will be at the game. Um. I don't know. I'm hoping I get there for the light show, but um, we'll have to wait and see. Like man, Depends like... what time I get away well... and how fast I can get from Nissan. <laughs> get... I'm going to have to get changed like Superman in a phone box and then yeah, I'm going to have to freaking race, race my way as close to the stadium as I can, abandon my car and then quickly get in the ground. Well, I might have a pint in the ground. No, you you, you do that. Down. I might, I don't know, see what happens. See if you can get there on time for a quick one. Well, you know, I'll, be, I'll be driving fast enough. <laughs> unless, unless you're a cop, unless you're a cop, and you're watching, then Dean I won't be. <laughs> uh, right, then that's about it with the leagues, isn't it? We've covered, yeah, we've covered quite enough. Uh, oh, no, sorry, briefly. Um, he did. Their manager did say that we've got good players. What did he say? This is exactly what he said. Well, good shape, good players, strong on the counter attack, and we've got players that can score goals in offensive positions. We're very dangerous side. He thinks it's going to be a tight game. Yeah. Now I could have said it better myself. That, I agree yeah. with all that but he's got it. but Haley said it with his German accent and it's getting high pitched no, I so I think Sunderland has good shape uh, good players 
We have. <laughs> yeah. Right then, that's moving on, Stephen. What we're going, moving on to Sunderland. Sunderland, aye. Well then, we may as well come. I'll just see him. I'm expecting the same lineup. Um, mm. And by the way, we've got a lot of stick because we, even though we we both big Neil, we both big fans of Neil. But we just said on performances we would have replaced him with Brown. Yeah, that's fair. And then we got a lot of people on our Facebook page, which I didn't see Facebook page. Oh, where's all the name mourners now? I was like, well, we weren't mourning. No, I didn't. We, mean... would, we were just simply saying off performances over this season, we think he should have been replaced. But he, he played the game. From what I've heard, he, wasn't, he still wasn't the game. Um, he didn't play that well against Derby, but it was a better performance. Well, I tell you what, Job's goal came through Dan Neil losing the ball. Yes, it did. The yeah, it did. But I. No, I didn't think that person on our page was saying that. About us, I think it was the ones who were saying take the armband off and yeah, shove it in like the team. Yeah. This, that, and the other. Possibly so. Like there were, there were certain, like there was some select few who were gone yeah. too far. But I think well, we, we just said on performances this season, which he hasn't been the oh, best. Yeah, yeah. I think he'd he, he, the first one to see it. Of course, well, he did. He, yeah. he took responsibility for the penalty and that. He hasn't been up to scratch. He didn't have the best of games against Derby again. So we were right to say we thought Brown deserved a chance. Yeah. Why not? Squad rotation and all that. Plenty of games being played. There was no problem like, with saying that. Me, I'm expecting the same lineup as what's been in the last two games. I would even gamble the same lineup. I would. But me personally, I would. I would still make the I would still make the change. I would still bring Neil up for Brown on because it's Leeds. Um, <coughs> because I won't argue with that. I'll bring Leeds. Trey Hume will play because um, he didn't get a yellow card, even though Sky no. Bet said that he did. No, he didn't. So I was walking around work for a bit, a little bit fuming. Sure. Was, <laughs> and then I got in. I was, it wasn't Hume. It was Mepham. <laughs> but but Sky Bet got it wrong. So cheers, dickheads. Um, <laughs> So you guaranteed to get a yellow card tomorrow night, so get that on your bet. Aye, 100%. But yeah, um, I want to mention Eastlow, you mentioned him earlier. Yeah. The, when you mentioned his movement, his pace, his strength and things like that. What, he, what he's given us in just the, like, the, the short time he's been here, assuming we haven't had for years, and that's what it is, it does. If you watch the goal against Derby, for example, on Tuesday night, yep. he's behind the defenders and he's running, Mundell's running down the left. And he's behind the defenders, and, and then just before him. Mundell gets, he nips in front of them, right. and then he gets his turn the end. And I've brought down here Roberts and Mundell, and now because they are, they have been doing it, and they can do it. Get down and put crosses in, because mm-hmm. we've now got someone who's going to be on the edge of the six-yard box. We've got mm-hmm. someone who's going to be there, who knows what runs to make, who knows where, what body position to put himself in. And having someone like that in the team is refreshing, because we, you, you know, for those who've been watching us for ages, you know, I've, I've winged loads about the lack of crosses going in the box, right. and I know people about saying, two, yeah, we did. Uh, yeah, because yeah, there was yeah. no one in there to get it. But now we've that. got someone in there who can reta- who, who can respond to crosses coming in the box. The only thing I'm worried about, Wayne Reid, come the end of the season. A lot of eyes will be on him because he'll score a load of goals and it's going to be another envy situation where we'll be, where we'll have yeah, to Yeah, but we've got them. the option to buy. And I don't think we have, have, we have got the option to buy. We have, have. Um, m- 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 uh, Not Mundell. Isidore has already even said himself, he's like, obviously I'm on loan. He says, but there's an option to buy. He went, but no, for me, um, I want to pl- I want to stay at Sunderland. I want to write, I want to write Sunderland in my career and in my and in history. Oh, that's class. So that's he's, honestly, class. I've met him. Honestly, he's one of them. He's he's just class. He's going to be a fan's favourite because he's one, he's barking man, and two, he's he's only been here five minutes and he loves the place already. Right. Listen, I hope he is here for a long time and I hope he does get a lot of scores because if you look at Sunderland's all-time great goal scorers like Kevin Phillips, then there's a drop off. Yeah. And we've even got Charlie White. I think he's in the top ten. So what does that tell you? Ross Stewart's there as well. It'll be nice to have somebody who'll be here for a long time. Yeah. Score plenty of goals for us as well. And obviously, inevitably, goes back where we belong in the Premier League. Yeah, definitely. Pavira, four to six weeks. Because he played 10 minutes of football on yeah, Tuesday. 10 minutes and he's out for six weeks. Ballard, he's been named in the Northern Ireland squad, but he said he could be involved, but it, it's going to be in a strap and he, he doesn't really want to yeah. involve him. So I cannot see him being involved, especially with Meffin being the way he's playing. Like, he's yeah, but we still need that centre half cover. Oh, 100% we do. But I, I don't think he's going to be involved because not just yet, I don't think so, but gone off just what Reggie said. Yeah. I kind of see him risking him like. Well, we'll see tomorrow night, won't we? I'll say aye. But hopefully, uh, listen, with the Dan Nain situation quickly, I wouldn't be bothered if he, he plays in. Oh, no, but neither would I. I wouldn't be bothered because, because I, I, tr- a, I trust him big red. 100, 100%. They've got like a team spirit. Yeah. Before, before the game, they were all huddling and they were all, you know, it's it's, it's reminiscent of last like this early last season. Yeah. Not, not the end, but early. And also, uh, he mentioned Dodds as well. And he says he's been picking Dodds' brain because Dodds got a mint record over Leeds. And that's that's about it in his press conference. Not too fair, he did, like. We'll, did give, we'll give him that. We'll give him it. Right, score prediction, Steve. I'm gone first this time because you went first last time. And uh, four wins, right, unbeaten at home, haven't conceded a goal, but Leeds have only conceded two in the last seven. 
So I'm going for a very tight game, but I think someone's going to nick it 1 0. Well, I've changed my mind to what we were talking about before. <laughs> I've changed my mind. We, the Stealing my likes of Fortress. I know Leeds are really good away from home, but I can still see us coming through this one and we're going to keep this run going. 2 1, Sunderland. 2 1? 2 1, I'm on 2 1. So you reckon we're going to concede at home for the first time? Aye, because of Leeds. It's got new faith in you, Pato. It's got new <laughs> I faith have. In you. No, I you've heard him there, yeah, you've heard him. No, I have. But that's it. <laughs> Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. See you tomorrow night. And how are the lads?